I have a reliable information that once we pass this budget, and it has been practiced, recurrent and current expenditures are being incurred in the name of that extension. And that breeds corruption. So we should, in, the, in, the, in, in passing the budget, put a clause that those to be employed, the, the, the projects to be implemented are purely that of capital, or maybe selected recurrent, if any. But we, if we do it blankly like that, I have reliable information that items that are recurrent in the previous year budget are being implemented because there is a blank check given to them. Distinguished colleagues, while I rise to support that this necessary and important bill be committed to the Committee of the Whole, I want to make a very important observation. The main purpose why we want this supplementary budget extended is for the executive to be able to complete the capital budgets of the previous year. That is the main reason. Therefore, we should do such by explicitly improve, including a clause where it will indicate that the supplementary budget is not just a rollover, but an extension to allow the government to complete capital budgets. The extension of the budget, I would really like to uh, throw more light on uh, what Senator Indume really spoke about. Uh, as we are extending the budget, we should, as a matter of responsibility, exclude recurrent. And the reason is this. If, for instance, in the budget, the initial budget, uh, recurrent shows an item where seminar or conference would have been attended but wasn't attended because there was no fund. Now that you are doing, you are extending the budget, that means it is going to be carried over. Meanwhile, the period of such uh, exercise would have been gone. So I think we should concentrate more on capital. Capital uh, items should be the items that we should concentrate more in extending, rather than extending both capital and, and recurrent. I saw, I saw contribute. Thank you, Mr. President. I support this bill wholeheartedly because, as the previous speakers have said, there are many uncompleted projects. And in any democracy or in any government, once appropriation is not completed, it goes back to the parliament. It's not only here. It happens in UK, in US. So we're not doing anything illegally. And I don't expect the public tomorrow to start saying that the Senate is running. We have authorized to run 10 bills. As long as it's legitimately extended like we are doing now. The executive is the one with the boss. And they know the difficulties in collecting the money from taxpayers or from revenue agencies. And we are bound to extend the budget because some of these budgets have been paid 50%, 70%, or 30%. Are we going to leave it? The answer is no. So I urge my colleagues, we are the legitimate track. Nigeria's my call us any name. This is not about name calling now. This is about extension of the budget in our country, in our constituencies, in our uh, districts. So it is not only, I also want to comment on what uh, Senator Alain Dume is saying. The budget is not selective. The budget, the budget is all in comparison. You have to be one thing. Because the budget is one. You cannot select some item. Which one are you going to leave? We have approved a budget here. And you cannot go back.
to sell us a few items. It's going to be bad for this system. Because if you like my face, you select my own. If you don't like my face, you drop my own. So we're not going to select any budget. What we're, what we're extending is uh, item, sorry. What we're extending is 2023 supplementary budget and the 2023 budget so that every item in that budget is as important as the other. You, you cannot ask to select one road in Abuja and leave the one in Yanya. So they all the same period. We ask the okay, I'm sorry. We, we ask the uh, executive to implement everything so that we can have benefit of supplementary budget. Thank you, Mr. President, for the time. I'm sorry if that's not what you said. I thought that is what you said. I say I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. But I'm worried and I want to express it that government is a continuum place in the next coming budget, say 2025, which they should carry over anything remaining in 2024 into the 2025. By this, we, should, we will stop all this extension and extension and extension. Any new budget should encompass part of the previous budget, budget uh, items that have not been implemented. And that should be the way we'll be going about all this. Thank you. I, I think I, I tend to... Mr. President, I, I think this second reading speaks for itself. I want to believe that since the budget itself was an executive bill, and since it's the executive that oversees the post of the nation, if the reason that extending the lifespan of the budget is necessary to execute projects in order to ensure that no projects are abandoned, to leave out the specter of abandoned projects in Nigeria, Mr. President, to all intents and purposes, I think we should resolve to allow this bill to pass appropriately, uh, knowing that uh, the executive should be able to uh, execute the budget and appropriately do so. Uh, and the own Nigerian's explanation, if we pass the budget and they can't implement, they owe us and Nigerians' explanation. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, permit me to lead the debate on the general principles of these two important bills which had just been read for the first time on the floor of the chamber, being the 2023 Appropriation Act Amendment Bill, as well as the Supplementary Appropriation Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 488. Mr. President and my highly esteemed colleagues, the bill seek to amend the 2023 Appropriation Act as well as the 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Act to, among other things, extend the implementation period to the 31st day of December 2024. The bills were read for the first time today, Thursday, 27 June 2024. Distinguished colleagues, you will recall that on Wednesday, 20th March 2024, this act were amended to allow for exhaustive implementation of capital projects under the act to the 30th day of June 2024. The extension will expire on Sunday, 30th June 2024, and many projects are yet to be completed. These bills, therefore, 
intend to further extend the implementation period of both acts to 31st December 2024 in view of the strategic importance of some key projects that are nearing completion and to allow for continued implementation for the maximum benefit of the country. Undoubtedly, this will go a long way to avoid the compounding problems of abandoned projects, hence the need for the enactment of these proposed legislations to extend the implementation. I therefore urge uh, their colleagues to give their full support to these bills, to allow for full utilization of the capital releases in order to help reflect the economy. On this note, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I hereby move that these bills be referred to the Committee of the Whole for clause-by-clause -clause consideration and passage. I thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. This is Senator Abamoro. In subsequent budgets, whatever has not been implemented in the previous budget should be carried forward. Uh, uh, that way, we, the uh, issue of extension will not uh, reoccur. Uh, I hope the chairman of our appropriation uh, will be well guided when he's dealing with the, the Minister of uh, Budget and National Planning and the, and the Minister of uh, Finance and the Budget Office. So that, that, way, that way, whatever they are not able to accomplish by December, as they are bringing the 2025 uh, appropriation bill, all those things should be included in those things for us to uh, deliberate on and ensure that they are completed. This is Mr. Zanengi. President Bauchi Central of Bauchi State. Mr. President, let me say I am full support of the provision to extend this budget to 20, 24 December. That is, of course, in tandem with the sweeping powers or near sweeping powers of the parliament in the constitution under powers and control of public funds, section 80, 82, section 80, sub 2, sub 3, and sub 4, as clearly demonstrated the powers of the National Assembly to prescribe into law how government money in the consolidated revenue uh, is, 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 is disseminated. Section so 3 further uh, also told us about how the National Assembly should make laws uh, whereby monies actually uh, comes out from the public funds. So this, the entire Section 80 inherently given powers for us to do what you are asked to do. But as a pointer to that, it is important that this should not be coming a normal procedure within the uh, uh, appropriation year period. It is important to understand we've started last year and we need to put a thinking cap in making sure that this doesn't repeat itself in the subsequent years ahead. What I'm trying to say, this should not be seen as a normal, but it is necessary at this point in time because of the positive opens coming into the government revenues and because of the near need as an emergency to the citizens of this country in making sure that we allow this extension to move forward because all we do here is to represent the people and the people's interests and the issue of technicalities when it comes to fighting insecurity, when it comes to fighting hunger, should not be the reason why we turn down this, 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 this uh, uh, resolution fully and well conversed by the Senate leader. So I think it is important we do that. Lastly, it is important to also look at the last comment, which you have also alluded to it, whereby at the end of the financial year, some projects are not implemented. The financial bill has given us the right to carry it forward to the, the, the incoming year. That's what you call carry forward. 
and then it should be implemented, it should be joined with that uh, next year's budget. It is important, lastly, sir, that the chairman of appropriation, the chairman of finance, should be able to make sure that before the December, before December, that this particular inputs are actually implemented. And if for any reason the government could not do that, they should report back to the National Assembly for discussion. It is important that we do that. Even as we are doing that, we do not know of what percentage has the supplementary budget been implemented. We need to know the percentage. We need to know how many remaining to be able to, to have a 100% implementation. I think it is the right move, and the parliament should be able to give its note to this particular request. I so submit. This is Senator Ning. Uh, where we are considering the appropriation bill for 2025, the committees on finance, the committees on appropriation, the committees on all the other organs that make up the uh, budget process should be able to ask questions. And if, for any reason, some of these projects are not uh, concluded or fully implemented, then they should submit the level of implementation and we should include it in the next year's budget as ongoing and appropriate accordingly. That way there will be no need to uh, think of uh, extension. Uh, I, th I think that's the a, 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 a proper thing to do. Uh, this is to, to Senator Wadada. you have something to add? Yes, um, thank you. Where a budget, where a seminar had passed, and then because of this extension, somebody decides to appropriate or to uh, take the money for a seminar he did not attend, then it means ICPC will look into it. So don't worry about it. The agents, all the agencies of government have different uh, 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 jobs to do. But uh, I take cognizance of what you have just said. But remember what uh, Senator uh, Oju Sakalo said. We are extending the lifespan of a budget. And we are extending the lifespan of the sub supplementary budget. The other issues of implementation are left to the executive. Then the issue of oversight is left to the legislature. We are going to do the oversight and be sure of what they are doing. And from time to time, we are here. They, they will bring their reports, and then they will bring their findings, and we'll look into those findings. We can conclude the problems of the future at this stage. Therefore, I will put the question. The Simish College, those who support that this bill be read a second time. Say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. The clerk, you may proceed to read the two bills a second time. Distinguished colleagues, a bill for an act to amend the 2023 Appropriation Act to further extend its implementation year to 30, 31st day of December. 2024 and for related matters 2024 SB 489 second reading taken. Distinguished colleagues, a bill for an act to amend the 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Act to further extend its implementation year to 31st, no, to 31st day of December 2024 and for related matters. 2024. Second, SB 488. Second reading taken. Leader of the Senate. This week, colleagues, having concluded the arguments, those in support that the two bills be now remitted to the Committee of the Whole, say aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. So the, the leader. Mr. President, the, the leader of the you may wish to move a motion that we move into the Committee of Supply to so we'll do the clause by clause concentration.
Mr. President of the Federal Republic of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I so move. The Senate in the Committee of Supply consider the bill for an act to amend the Appropriation Act Amendment 2023 to further extend its implementation to the 31st day of December 2024 and for related matters and approve as follows. Clauses 1 to 2 as recommended. Explanatory memorandum as recommended. Short title clause 3 as recommended. Long title page 1 as recommended. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Supply? Distinguished colleagues, the Senate in the Committee of Supply also considered the second bill for an act to amend the Supplementary Appropriation Act 2023 to further extend its implementation period to 31st day of December 2024 and for later matters, and approved as follows. Clauses 1 and 2 as recommended. Explanatory memorandum as recommended. Short title clause 3 as recommended. Long title page 1 as recommended. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of Supply? Yes. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of Supply? Yes. Suspension of our rules, 78-1. Those in support of this motion as, as seconded, say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. The clerk of the Senate, you may proceed to read the bills. Which colleagues, including Senator Nengi. A bill for an act to amend the 2023 Appropriation Act in order to extend the implementation year from 30th June 2024 to December 31st, 2024, and for later matters 2024. Third reading taken and passed. A bill for an act to amend the 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Act in order to extend the implementation year from 28th day of June 2024 to 31st day of December 2024, and for later matters 2024. Third reading taken and passed. Let me thank all distinguished senators for their patriotic contributions. So the discourse on this uh, amendment of the Appropriation Acts, first the extension of the 2023 appropriation from 20, 30th day of June 2024 to 31st day of June 2024, and second for the extension of the 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Act from 30th day of June 2024 to 31st day of December 2024, and for later matters there too. I thank you for your contributions, I thank you for your patriotic duties, and most especially, I thank you for your timely intervention, which will enable us and enable the executive arm of our government to continue with projects without abandonment. 
May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes. The, the Senator Jimmy Kuta.